Back to business in Formula One at Zandvoort, the circuit by the sea in the Netherlands. Wonderful circuit, lots of history there. Some of it sad, some of it monumental, but no denying the atmosphere at the circuit on Friday, back from the August break, everybody keen to go. And what happened? Well, the first session punctuated by the usual inevitable red flag at one point, brought out by Nico Hulkenberg in the Haas Ferrari on this occasion, celebrating his re-signing for the team along with Kevin Magnussen for 2024. So yeah, you know, you live with these things. But the first session, pretty good. The track finding its grip. Max Verstappen towards the end, showing again, surprise, surprise, that the Red Bull continues to show its amazing pace in this 2023 Formula One season. Perhaps the most significant elements of FP1, free practice one, this was a standard Grand Prix weekend, you'll be pleased to hear, no sprint to complicate things, with that Ferrari were basically nowhere. They ran Robert Schwartzman in Carlos Sainz's car, so not too much expected of him for obvious reasons. But Charles Leclerc never really dancing with the music, uh, not necessarily Charles, but the team in general, the car, the combination in that first session. And the other team not doing anything particularly spectacular in that first session was McLaren. Uh, but then again, they were running a lot of rakes on the car, doing a lot of aero testing, a sign that they're pretty confident these days about how the car's gonna go. And they're quite prepared to spend as much time as they need to in inverted commas, in, in free practice one. So a lot of good data, no doubt, accumulated by McLaren in that first session. And at this point, it's worth detailing the compound choice that Pirelli have made for the Dutch Grand Prix, the hardest in the spectrum, right up there alongside, wait for it, Bahrain, Barcelona and Silverstone. That's not necessarily because of the track surface or the ambience. This is because of the two very high vertical load corners at Zandvoort, the corner behind the pits and leading onto the Hunza rug is now very heavily banked and the last corner very heavily banked as well. They've been in place since the circuit was reintroduced to the Grand Prix calendar, but they do put a lot of load through the tyres, unexpected load, vertical load, which can be very, very hard on the tyres. So Pirelli, for obvious reasons, taking no gambles at all with their tyre choice and running that hardest of the in the compound range. And guess what team has always looked good on these tyres? Let's take Bahrain out of it. Okay, it's right at the beginning of the year. If you look at Spain, yep, qualified beautifully. McLaren, Silverstone, McLaren, and here they are. Uh, you could predict that going into Zandvoort, it was going to be another very, very strong weekend for McLaren. If you believe in this thing about a car being suited to a compound, but certainly the evidence is that the McLaren, for whatever reason, manages to get that hard compound range from Pirelli right into the operating window very, very effectively. So let's have a look at what they did at the beginning of FP2 on light fuel. Nobody running soft tires at this point because they were getting the car basically set up, making sure everything was right for the long runs that were going to come later in the sessions. So this was quite an indicative little period which showed how quick the cars were when they weren't trying with massive grip on, with the soft compound, but running either the medium or the hard tire. So you can see Max Verstappen and Sergio Perez 1-2 for Red Bull 12-4, 12-6. But Lewis Hamilton and George Russell P3, P4 in the Mercedes. So on the back of Lewis Hamilton being P3 in FP1 in the first session behind Max Verstappen and Fernando Alonso, that was a little cameo session on the medium tire, which gives, I presume, gives Mercedes a reasonable amount of confidence going into the weekend. We'll get on to the long runs in a minute. And then Oscar Piastri continuing that incredible show of pace and confidence that he now has in that car on the hard tire, a 12.9, not far away from George Russell. So you can imagine that Oscar, having been doing a lot of data testing in FP1, very confident now, immediately quick, look where Lando Norris is also on the hard tire, 13.2. And then it all came to an end for Oscar in that tight left hand, very bank corner behind the pits, the Gerlag corner it used to be called in the old Zandvoort days. He lost it basically, and not the only driver to have done so this weekend, but he lost it uh, in the middle of that corner. You run very, very high there on the banking. And I guess if you've got a lot of confidence, and I guess if you're on the hard tire, it is possible that you're gonna lose the car the way Oscar did. It wasn't a massive lose, but it ended up in the barrier, which brought out the red flag. But compounding it was Daniel Ricciardo. And you can see that Daniel Ricciardo also had been very quick, also on the hard tire. 
Uh, and of course, there's a bit of history now between Oscar Piastri and Daniel Ricciardo. Daniel's such a good guy, there is no ill feeling there. He's handled the whole leaving McLaren, losing his drive and going to Alfa Tari with enormous dignity, I think. But for Daniel, as he came into that tight bank left-hander, he was lining up to do the saucer rim around the top and then found Oscar's car right in the middle. This is literally only a second or two after Oscar had hit the wall. Probably not enough time for uh, yellow flags to have come out. And rather than hit Oscar, he then just drove the car into the barrier. A nice thing to do in reality, but I don't know. Would Daniel have been thinking, oh, if I was at McLaren, I probably wouldn't have spun there. None of this would have happened. Here I am. Uh, FP2 is now lost for me. Obviously, it was lost for Oscar as well. Uh, and Oscar in the car that Daniel would have been in had he not gone to McLaren from Alpine. Anyway, all that there. You just put it under the heading of irony. Uh, in terms of Oscar Piastri, under the heading of experience. Uh, because that's what young guys with enormous talent, the sort of mistakes they will make. And I think the other point about that Oscar Piastri shunt was then, and I've made this point before, not only about Lando, but about other drivers. We've seen it many times. When your very impressive teammate, who is quick, who's always giving you trouble, does have an issue like this, hits the wall, makes a mistake, all of a sudden it's... Ah, I can breathe now. I will be Lando Norris and I will do what I can do in this McLaren. And, and the session restarted after a while. Everybody went out on soft tyres to put in a quick lap now before they did their long runs. And Lando Norris, quickest, straight away. Unbelievable lap. Beautiful lap to watch. Really, really good. Confident, flowing with the car. Uh, slightly long corners, as we know from Lando, but incredibly smooth and, and lovely to watch. So, yeah, I think from Lando's point of view, Obviously a good car, obviously a good day, and we've got the long runs coming up in a second. But beyond that, um, I think it will have given him a little bit of confidence to see the Oscar Piastri phenomenon just coming to a grinding halt, albeit just on a Friday, because there's no doubt that Oscar will be back over the weekend. And as I say, look at that time already, 12.9 to Lando's 13.2 on hard tyres. It's really the, effectively the first time both of them have been out doing a quick run because they've been doing so much data running in FP1. So that's what happened there. Um, Pierre Gasly also looking pretty good in the Alpine. And Alex Albon, who had been very good from the start, both Williams, Logan Sargent as well, uh, also good in that little cameo session. So when practice restarted after that delay, it was Lando Norris in the McLaren with the soft tyres bolted on. He hadn't really done many quick laps prior to that, who was fastest on the soft tyre. Very impressive run by Lando. And as I said at the start of this vid, uh, no surprise to see the McLaren so in sync with this compound range that provided for Zandvoort. Max Verstappen equaled his time, almost, but not quite. Uh, P2, there was a lot of traffic. There was a lot of expletives deleted on Max's radio today as he encountered uh, one slower car after another, particularly going into the last corner. Very annoying from his point of view. Alex Albon, P3 for Williams Mercedes. Really, really good performance. I mean, Williams looking really strong in both light fuel and heavy fuel performance. So we'll get onto the heavy fuel in a minute. Lewis Hamilton continuing to show that the Mercedes does have some pace here, 11.6. Yuki Sonoda, though, only a tenth slower in the Alpha Tari. So you could say, yeah, Mercedes looking strong, but you could also say, well, they're only a tenth quicker than Alpha Tari. What's that all about? Uh, Pierre Gasly, yep underlining Alpine continuing to be strong. This is the first race, of course, after the big personnel reshuffle there on the management side and the technical side at Alpine. And Sergio Perez, 11.8. Yeah, looking just like Sergio. Very, very good in all the traction sections of Zandvoort, coming out of the slow corners, coming out of turn one, coming out of the chicanes, really good. But Max, you could just tell, has the edge when it comes to leaning on the car, going through the very, very fast section out the back. And on any medium speed to change of direction section, Max just looking superb in the car as ever. But Sergio will have his corners at Zandvoort and he will be able to get a lot out of the rear tyres, but probably he'll end up using the left front more than Max around on, in, in race form. Lance Stroll did no laps at all in FP1. There was some technical drama with the car, but he got out 11.8. Pretty good lap. Look how similar the lap times are. How many have done 11.8? How many 11.9? How many are 12.0? I mean, qualifying tomorrow is going to be a lot about traffic and who's out at the right time, when the reds come out, whether you've timed your lap 
perfectly. It's going to be a lot of uh, luck or bad luck coming into play tomorrow in qualifying. And of course, everybody very aware of that. Uh, Valtteri Bottas, who got fined for being late to the press conference yesterday, nonetheless looking pretty good in the major livery change for this one race. Alfa Romeo, 11-9. Fernando Alonso, yeah, a little bit under the radar here still, 11-9, but he does have his moments. It's coming up. Uh, Charles Leclerc, 11-9. So, yeah, you know, about as quick as the Aston, they would say, but look where they are relative to the Mercedes. Around Zandvoort, three tenths of a second is an awful lot of time. Logan Sargent, again, looking good. Esteban Ocon in the other Alpine. And George Russell didn't get in a great lap, but feeling pretty confident about how things were going to go. So let's have a look then at what happened when they put fuel in the car. It's not necessarily in the order in which they finished in terms of lap time, but I put in as many representative driver combinations as I think we can take on board at this stage of the weekend. And you can see there's quite a, a range there of who ran the soft tyre and who ran the hard and the medium for that matter. So the soft tyre looking like pretty much a race tyre. Uh, as I say, it is a hard range of uh, compound around here and McLaren doing probably the best job of getting that tyre to work around its car. But let's have a look then. We'll go through it. Max Verstappen ran the soft tyre. Very impressive as ever. 15-9. Look at the consistency there. 59-61, 59-63, 59-59. Wow. I mean, that is just sensational uh, performance from Max. 16-1, 16-6, 16-3. So yeah, there's your benchmark. There's what Max Verstappen, if he's at the front of the race, is capable of doing. Uh, Lando Norris, we've got, I've got him next to, 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 to Max. He's also on the soft tyre. Literally just go from one lap to the other, see what Lando was doing when Max was doing his 59 16 2. So that's not bad. 16 5, 17 0, 16 3, 16 2, 16 4. So no 15s there. So you could say Lando a little bit off in terms of uh, fuel in the car, but nonetheless very impressive. Uh, and that could well be the race on Sunday, that margin. It's not massive, but of course, over a full race distance, that will add up. Give or take all the safety car periods that will come into play. And as George Russell said afterwards, you know, qualified P6 last year, fighting for the lead on Sunday. So anything can happen at Zandvoort. Lando right at the end coming in. This just shows how well McLaren, I think, ran this day, despite Oscar's shunt and obviously losing data coming from his car in this uh, second part of FP2. Having done all that data accumulation in FP1, he ran the soft tyre. He was quickest on the, with light fuel. Very, very good run on the soft tyre with heavy fuel. And then right at the end, let's put some hard tyres on as well just to see how the car feels on that. So very, very good day's work by Lando Norris and the McLaren team in general. So let's have a look at Lewis now. They did make some changes to the car uh, between the two sessions. And from Lewis's point of view, it didn't feel quite as good as it had in the morning. 16-4, 16-1, 15 Yeah, kind of Max Verstappen territory there, backing off 17-5, get a bit of heat out of the tyres, 16-6, 16-6. I suppose that's the difference. You get heat out of the tyres, out of the, heights, the heat cycle on the Mercedes, and they don't necessarily pick up the grip that Max Verstappen is able to do. And therein lies the difference. It's a much smaller operating window for Mercedes. And Lewis also stopping right at the end to put on a set of softs to see how the car felt on softs and doing a 16.9. So that's the difference in the operating window uh, in terms of the size of the window when it comes to, say, Mercedes compared with McLaren, and also how much McLaren are able to get out of this tyre, this construction as well. Ever since, really, the, uh, the construction's gone stiffer, McLaren have looked absolutely superb on this, on this particular compound range. Then I put in Charles Leclerc, and <laughs> it's kind of sad reading, isn't it? Seven, he's on the soft tyre, 17-4, 17-0, 16-9, 16-6, 16-4, 16-5, 16-9, 16-8, At this point, and bearing in mind with heavy fuel load in the car, they tend not to run with the DRS open at Zandvoort. I should talk a little bit about top speeds. They do seem to be comparable. Lando Norris, 292 uh, over the start-finish line, effectively at the end of Sector 3, not through the trap. Uh, Lewis Hamilton, 287, 290. So the Mercedes, with the smaller operating window, slightly slower and also slower in a straight line. That could well be that the bulk of that difference over the lap is indeed that top speed. Max Verstappen, interestingly, 
not particularly quick in a straight line with fuel in the car, 285. And that was borne out by Sergio Perez as well. So you can see Red Bull's philosophy here on this circuit. It's a high downforce circuit. Because they're not as quick in a straight line, you can see how much downforce they are generating on that Red Bull RB19. So 285 for Max Verstappen. And then Charles Leclerc in the Ferrari. And probably this tells the story of where Ferrari are at, 297 on average and Fernando Alonso in the Aston Martin about the same as well so a big difference you're talking about 11 kilometers an hour difference between the Red Bull and the Ferrari and the Aston Martin around Zandvoort and most of that is just an indication of how much downforce Red Bull have and how much downforce Ferrari and Aston Martin don't have with the setup on these tires to get any sort of lap out of the car uh, and, and you could say some of that is very difficult to get the Ferrari and presumably the Aston to work on this compound range from Pirelli. But also look at how much downforce the Red Bull can generate when they really want to crank wing on and make it work. It's really impressive. So Charles Leclerc struggling and Carlos Sainz, who got into the car obviously for the second session, also struggling, went off a couple of times as well, trying to do a decent job in that car, but basically doing the same sorts of times. And I should say here, George Russell kind of mirroring what Lewis Hamilton was doing, just a fraction slower, I'd say, with fuel in the car. Alex Albon, yeah, we've seen how quick he is already. Let's see what he's doing on full tanks. First of all, point worth making, look how many laps he did on, on, on a fuel run. I mean, this is a Williams team that last year didn't look particularly impressive in terms of the way they could put the data together, the way they were running their weekend, organizing their Fridays. And look how organized they are now in that long run from Alex Albon. And let's look at the time, 16.6. 16.5, 16, 16.4, 16.7, 19.6, cooler tyres, 16.7, 17.1. And then he's in the 17s. So yeah, the tyres are starting to go off on the, on the Williams, but, but the Williams not that quick in a straight line either. So they are using that chassis really well now. Fernando Alonso on the hard tyre, so difficult to make a direct comparison for most of his run. 16.5, 16.3, 16.7, 18, get the temperature out of the tyre. 16.4, 16.6, pretty impressive run on the hard tyre for Fernando. And then he puts the soft tyre on and does a 15.6. That's why I said earlier in the video, let's just see what Fernando's got in store for this weekend. You can never rule Fernando out for doing something and already thinking about some sort of alternative strategy going into the race on Sunday. So 15.6. I should make the point here that also that there is a bit of a question mark about the weather as well over the weekend going into the Dutch Grand Prix. It's right on the North Sea uh, and the straight very prone to crosswind and tailwind and head on wind and the dust and the sand will swirl as well at Zandvoort. Lots of variables come into play. And I put Pierre Gasly in there as well. He was out doing a long run on the soft tyre. So he should really be compared with Lando and Max in terms of uh, direct comparison. 16.1, 16.2, very impressive. 16.6, 16.3, that's a very good four lap run. Then a slow lap, 20.6, 16.5. And then he's into the 17s and finishes in the mid to high 16. So not too bad at all for Alpine as well. Assuming they can get reliability, they look to be a real threat to a team like, say, Mercedes at the moment. They look pretty good. So there we are, quite a lot going on. Um, obviously, things will develop, things will change. The weather will come into play, I suspect, as this weekend goes on. But at the moment, Max Verstappen and Red Bull and Sergio Perez, to some extent, looking very strong. But Lando Norris, luxuriating, if that's the right word? No, it's probably not taking the responsibility of the team on his shoulders after Oscar Piastri, looking very impressive, hit the wall, goes out and he's quickest on the soft tyre with no fuel and very, very quick on his long run as well. So McLaren, again, looking good on this range of Pirelli compounds, the same tyre that we had in play at the British Grand Prix. And we all know what happened there or nearly happened there. So that was Friday. Looking forward to see what happens at the weekend. Thanks for watching. See you then. Thank <laughs> you.